What's going on, everybody? Andrew Thompson here of the Andrew Thompson Interviews YouTube channel. My guest today is the Amazon been in the wrestling business for over a decade. Her name is Aisha Raymond. Aisha, how are you doing today, ma'am? Hello. I'm just really, it's really hot today. So I, <laughs> I excuse the shininess. I try my best. I say, <laughs> I, I, say, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to do this with me today. You know, greatly appreciate it as always. Uh, just for uh, just to kick it off, just tell, tell the people who are watching, like, uh, how did you get started in the pro wrestling business? I know that you were either trained by Robbie Brookside or uh, Soraya Knight, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, mean, I started off in the wrestling business. It was basically a, a girl who wanted to accomplish her dream. Um, I started training very young. I left college. Never do that. I did go back in the end. I started in Nor in London with um, Justin Richards, FWA wrestling star. He was my first ever trainer, and he basically installed in me that you, as, in order to be good in this business, you have to have as, as many teachers and as many like tutors as possible everybody learns differently from different places so from there I went to Norwich and then from Norwich I went to Leicester with Robbie Rookside and it, it like just, just looking at your career and like what you've done so far it, it seems like you carved out like a nice piece of like wrestling for yourself uh, just just tell me like what was it like for you growing up as a black woman in London uh, the experiences that you had and also you know getting into the wrestling business um it was interesting because there, as, as you know there aren't that many of us <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> when it comes to wrestling, um, it, it's it's a cultural thing. It's a um, it's a parent thing. And my parents are Caribbean, and you know, no one wants to be a wrestler. You know, my mum always pushed us to kind of um, accomplish our dreams. But when it comes to black people in terms of um, careers and jobs and opportunities, you always aspire for your child to be a doctor, or a nurse, or a lawyer. I went to my mum and said I wanted to slam people for a living. <laughs> um, I always wanted to be an entertainer. She pushed me to do like drama schools and performing arts. And I was always into art and music. But when I told her that I wanted to be a wrestler, uh, she said the same thing that I found out, that there's not going to be many people like you. And, and they weren't. Like I was, I was the first of what then became many. And as, as much as, you know, you can look back in history and see it, the, the, there weren't that many of us. It was myself and, and Nanya at the time, who is now Amara, a voodoo queen. And... Uh, I carved the way now as Amazon and it's opened so many doors for so many other shiny new faces. And just, and just looking back at your journey so far, like just in the wrestling business, like in, in kind of like a, like a hindsight 2020 thing, retro, retrospect kind of thing. Was, is there anything about your journey that you would change or you would just leave everything exactly the way it is? Um, the person that I am, I, I always, my motto in life is live to be different and your difference will change the world. So me personally, I wouldn't change anything because every experience I've had, every trial, tribulation, success, downfall has been for a reason. And it's either made me stronger or bleh, as a person. But mm. if I could change something, I would have learned to fly from the very beginning <laughs> and been like massive and huge and just been like doing Vader assaults from like day one. <laughs> And just getting into your in-ring career here, I read that you were an IPW UK tag team champion. Like it was the fourth, it was you, Paul Robinson, Will Ospreay, and Will Wayne Wright. I hope I'll get his name right. Oh, his name. You, can get, you can get it right or wrong. It's up to you. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> but but, but I, I just need to know, like, how did that parent come about? Like what were their experiences like? Um, you know, the, any funny stories from the group that you guys had uh, that you can reflect on? The entire journey was a funny story. Uh, mm. I got roped into a situation that I generally didn't, I didn't expect to be a part of. And um, when I came into the IPW, I just came into the women's division. And I don't know if it was the, the mix of all, all of us being the Essex and the London and we're splicing everything together, but I became, a, a, what do you call it? An involuntary member of the Swords of Essex. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, the watch was met with very much controversy by people outside the Swords of Essex. But um, it was interesting because th that all came about because of backstage nonsense. Mm. And um, one day Scott just wasn't at the show and I was. So for one night only, Will Ospreay and I were tag team champions. The belts just got passed. We basically did the free belts rule with the belt. Right. And uh, we were one night only tag team champions and defended that belt um, in place of Scott and Paul Robinson, respectively, at the time. And, you know, it, it was cool to kind of go, yay, here's Aisha two belts, but not really. <laughs> <laughs> 
And then, I, and I know one of the other belts that you had was the IPW UK Women's Title, right? Like, just, I, I, you, I think you were the second Black woman to ever win that title, which is like, crazy to me, and that's a very historic feat. Like, you won that title like in a like cash-in type situation. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll we'll do it. We'll do it properly. Yes, I was the second Black person to win that title. The first mm-hmm. Black person was Tennessee Honey. Mm-hmm. Um, now, respectively, Livy Grace, and she in my eyes opened opened up um, the women's division for at IPW at the time. If it wasn't for her at the time, there would have been no women's division. She was the women's division. And um, just generally um, being in that division at the time, there wasn't, it was a very small pool. The match was amazing. I got to face one of my best friends, Pollyanna. And um, I don't know if anybody's seen the flashbacks of the picture. I used to do what people call the angel wings. Mm. And I say that that's a horrible trait from Soraya Knight. And it's basically <laughs> a double trap to the back. And <laughs> that, yeah, there are some people, <laughs> there, that was all you needed. There are some people who like it, there's some people who don't. And um, it was one of the things that I, I knew I could get away with with Polly. But I, again, it was uh, around the time where I started bodybuilding. I didn't realize my own strength. And when I did it, you can actually physically see the forearm, like the imprints of my forearm muscles in her back in the picture. Oh. I'll find a picture and I'll post it to you. <laughs> I know that. I know that had to, like just the, some, some of the words. But like, no, but, but what I see is most of the time, like when people get hit that hard and like you see like a print. So sometimes they don't really like feel it until like they actually like physically see it. And that's when the pain starts like really kicking in. Oh no, it was there. The moment I lifted my hand it up, it was like I skinned myself. It was like brownie red, just all down her back. It was beautiful. Uh- <laughs> oh yeah, but look, you, you've been all over the place. Like I know you've been in Germany, like as you mentioned, I mentioned uh, while we were all there, you've been in Scotland. We know you've been in Japan. Oh, just talk to me about your experience in Japan. Like what, was that like a, a bit of a culture shock just being like in a completely different environment? Like I've always wanted to go to Japan and I, I feel like when I get there, one day, hope like it, it'll probably be like that. That culture shock, just being in such a different environment. Was it the same for you when you first uh, got your start there? Yes, I mean, I, I say it now, and I say it before. I say it again. Everyone should go to Japan. Mm-hmm. I've already convinced about seven people in the past six months to now go. Uh, I feel bad because of COVID. A couple of people had to cancel their flights and stuff, but mm-hmm. you know. Um, but and especially black people. Every black person go to Japan. They love us. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, there, there is a, a guy out there who runs a Black Experience Japan. He's an amazing... Yeah, I've I, I, I seen some of his stuff, yeah. There you go. He will give you every experience every Black person has had in Japan. And in terms of uh, a cultural community, you, you will fit in well. And you would hear from every story of every person that they have not had a bad experience. The cultural experience and just the belief and just the community that is the Japanese culture is so welcoming and so warm that... It's, it's a sad, sad story to say, but one of my first trips that I went out, one of the things that I said when I came back is I can't, can't, I can't understand why people who, A, don't understand what I'm saying most of the time, <laughs> B, have no clue about my back history or what I'm about, but just generally see the person in front of you. They are able to treat me better than the people that I've grown up for years. Wow. And to this day, I still don't get it. I can spend six months to a year in Japan and have people that I consider best friends and they will be my best friends for life. And I will come back home and not see them. And there are people here that I've grown up with for 10, eight, nine years and who have seen me day in and day out and know my name, right. but I would not consider them as being my friend. That, now, that, that's actually like real interesting. Like the fact that like, you know, you go there and like, you know, I, I feel like anybody would have like going into just a different, like such a different environment. Like you always have those, you know, those inner thoughts, like, you know, just like, what like what is going to be like how are they going to react to me as a black person like and then you get there and it's like like a complete left from what you thought it was going to be and then like everything just flows from there so it, 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 it seems like you just had like a great time in japan overall and everything just went smooth and it sounds like you were never probably going back oh well, <laughs> I, I i say it all the time and natsuki says it to me amazon you're a japanese i'm like yep yes i am <laughs> But it's like, even they're fascinated with the Caribbean culture and I'm Jamaican as well. So to go there and just see like Bangra, sorry, to see Bangra dancing, sorry, to see reggae, like dancing, to see music, to see the Caribbean culture, the food. And it's just like, yeah, I'm home. I'm home and I'm surrounded by anime and manga. (laughs) 
and it, and it, you wrestled for I think Ice Ribbon. You wrestled in Zero One. You wrestled in Stardom. Uh, I, I know Ice Ribbon. They did some empty arena stuff. I, I think uh, not not too long ago, like real recently, yeah. they did some empty arena stuff. What, what do you think about that? Uh, at the empty arena show, like, are you into that stuff? Do you think you could you you could like thrive oh, yeah. in that environment? Oh yeah, I mean, I to be honest, it's not. It, it's weird to say that some yeah. people. I get the the aspect of not having an audience because mm -hmm. as wrestlers, we're trained to react to an audience. But realistically, when you're training as a trainee, as a wrestler, there's not that many people there apart from what, 10 people? Right. So a, a no audience kind of setting, isn't that, that isn't that much of a difference? You're still supposed to be living and reacting to the moment. You're still supposed to be an entertainer. To me, I can't wait to do one of those matches. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's just basically a cinematic, athletic exhibition and we you've been trained to do that since day one so i don't understand why it's alien to some people i really don't i it, to me it's a concept that i don't get i, I don't get why people are going oh i don't like it and i'm like but if, if you were training you're doing that from the, the beginning what's wrong with it <laughs> As I am, before the pandemic like did, did you have any like matches or bookings that you were looking forward to um, in, in Japan, and did you? Or did you also? I, I know WrestleMania week was coming up in Tampa. Did, were you planning on heading down to uh, to Tampa for for you know for the festivities down there? Like I know I know some people who like weren't even like going to be wrestling down there. Some wrestlers who weren't even wrestling, they were just going like to you know see friends and like just be in the you know all that atmosphere, like just with a good energy down there. Were you planning on heading down there as well? Yeah, I mean, I've got family there. I've got family, right. and I've got friends in Tampa, and I I was gonna detour and then. Japan and then come back to the UK you know when I feel like it um, mm. <laughs> but um yeah I had all those plans and all those plans have now been crushed by COVID so right I, I, I know this thing just like put like a damper just like on everybody in wrestling and, and everybody around the world of course with civilly in wrestling I know this like hurt a lot of people like as far as like what's like what is what's next and it's like no really like really no timetable about when the independent scene is going to bounce back or when you know promotions are going to start running you know outside of i think impact um AEW and, and wwe I, I think some promotion like i saw one promotion in canada i think they're doing like some empty arena stuff but like it's like you know it, it's like things change like they announce it and then like they get shut down so it's like you never really know like what's yeah. going to happen but like as an independent wrestler yourself has this like whole situation like kind of made you like change your mind well not really change your mindset but like it made you think you know m maybe signing an exclusive deal like isn't like the worst thing or have you just been up the mindset of like you know i'm gonna just wait till this thing over and then you know keep trucking on like i was before um it's it's made me think more about uh, <sighs> It's weird. As as a wrestler, you should all you should be multifaceted anyway. Mm. It's made me think more about the other things that I can do apart from being physically in a ring. Right. So there's there's more ways to be a wrestler than actually physically being in the ring. So it's had me had it's had to change my mind state like that. But in terms of it in affecting me as an independent wrestler, right now, no, because everybody's suffering at the same time. So it's okay. If it was just kind of, if selfishly, if it was like split down the middle and then half of us were suffering and half of us were still able to do stuff, then fine. But right now, everybody's got restrictions. So until the law is completely lifted, we can all kind of just chill for a while. And getting into your room of stardom, I know you were an artist, a stardom champion. You held the belts with Jazzy Gabber, who's also known as Alpha Female, and uh, Kyoko, Kyoko Kimura, who's the mother of the, you know, the late Hana Kimura. Uh, and, and any uh, fond memories or special memories that you want to share with Kyoko or memories that you uh, were able to you know, see, uh, have with Hana through Kyoko? Um, I, when I went out to stardom and I met uh, Kimura-san, uh, Hannah was very young so I, I only had very few interactions with her and again my condolences to the family and friends um, but my experience of Kimura definitely she taught me how to be more violent in the most safest way but uh, she opened up uh, doors to me in terms of the Japanese entertainment and how they present things and how they are able to make things um, exciting, safe, and um, kind of chaotic at the same time. Mm -hmm. Which is why when I came back, most people were afraid. Yeah, so, and obviously <laughs> like we've seen like so many people like just share like the, the like just the outpour, like massive amounts of love to, you know, the, the, fam the Kamora family. Like it's just like, it, it, it's, it's really like just sad that somebody had to lose you know what I'm saying? Like a like you had to lose somebody like that, and you know somebody lost a mother, a close. Every, obviously, a lot of people lost a close friend 
people lost an associate. You know, it's like, it's just terrible. Like the way things like, like really turned out then from a professional aspect, it's like always going to be that, you know, that cloud over like, you know, what, could have she become like what where she had where would she have been in five years from now like how big of a star could she have become over the next couple of years and lie on that question it, it won't get answered and it's like like just the way that people like I like I like just in terms of like just getting into social media like I feel like everybody kind of gets like negative comments on from time to time like just, just from your own perspective like how do you how do you deal with negative comments or do you just kind of like just brush it to the wayside and like you, you don't really pay attention to any of that stuff um it's really weird like i i've now learned to kind of put myself into a different my state and go it's not me reading that now it's amazon and whatever they can say to amazon amazon's uh, literally gonna okay. go <laughs> to okay. you but there were times where i would open like people would i'd get some nasty things and i have shown natsuki my senpai in japan some of the things that i used to get even when i kept was in japan when i came back from the classic that was the worst i i got some of the most horrible meshes i could breathe um right. but what makes me sick the most is right now and especially in a time like this where this is all we have um this is supposed to be our tool this is news this is entertainment this is connection this is community for some people and something that's supposed to be used as something useful was used to make somebody feel like less than human something was used that was supposed to be used as a tool was used as a weapon and it should have never have been like that and it should never be like that like the one thing that i never understand about trolls and social media and people with opinions is yes everybody is allowed to have an opinion but everybody is also human like the same thing that may hurt your feelings can still hurt mine mm -hmm. i can be as just as nasty as you are to me but again why we're all human there everybody no one has the right to like everybody else but you still have to realize that we're not all stone right and just uh you know converting the conversation a bit the first time i actually saw you wrestle the first time i remember this was the world of sports shows back in 2018 to the taping the world of sports taping back in 2018 oh, when they had no. <laughs> oh yeah we we, we, <laughs> we, we we get it and that it's like because like after the first season it just seemed like that show just like went off the face of the earth and i remember they said they were going to like some live event stuff and then i think they did like two shows and then like the show just like disappeared and then i know nxt uk happened like did, did you ever, like did you ever hear anything like about like a second season or a second set of tapings or, will, or do you just think that you know the nxt uk brand kind of like you know kind of push that to the side but i mean when you look when, when you when i look take a look back at the roster the people that were on the roster like it weren't it wasn't that many people that eventually went to nxt uk it was probably like six or seven people and the rest everybody else kind of just spread out like i know osprey went to new japan and d preseason aew like everybody kind of like you know spread spread out and briefly you know she's a fixture in stardom as well like like did, did you ever hear anything about like um you know, a second season of the World of Sport, or did like they just like did they did they ghost out too? Hey, I was in Japan. Oh, um, <laughs> when <laughs> I we did tapings, uh, uh, I and I, I went I uh, went to Japan. Um, I most of the social media stuff I was doing, I was doing from my apartment in Japan. Uh, when I came back, I got told off. I got told about the tour that was supposed oh, okay, to be happening. Okay. Um, some things led to another and there was no Amazon on tour. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, like it, it, it was something that happened. I'm grateful for the opportunity, but uh, I don't know. It's COVID. I'll say it. They should have not let the inmates run the asylum and it would have been fine. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I, 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 that's I, I, all I'm saying. No, you, you, you kind, of, you kind of summed it up, summed it up pretty nice, and like I, I think that's, that's all. You, I, I think that's all you really need to say, just to put it in perspective. But, I can't um, get in trouble for that. <laughs> but like, like when you look at some of the time, like I mentioned before, like I think um, you got Dave Master, uh, Kaylee Ray, uh, Viper, all of them. They went to NXT UK, and uh, they all signed exclusive deals with them. Did the NXT UK ever try to like bring you in? Because I know you have you have done some work with WWE in the past with the May Young Class, but had like they for as far as the NXT UK brand, have they ever reached out to you and tried to bring you in for some stuff? I was abroad at the time when there was a mass uh, okay. women's um, tryout that happened, and I was abroad at the time, and that's what I was focusing on. And when I was with Seedling, I didn't realize if I was going to be there for six months or a year. So everything that was happening in here, I had no idea of. <laughs> 
like when you, when you like uh you know when you look at the I'm, I'm, like, I remember they had the the the, the all all female trials over in the UK last June this like, last June they had the all female uh, UK trials and like it, it seemed like mostly everybody that was at the trial like they didn't really go to WWE like I think some of them they might have did some extra work but like most of them like they went up elsewhere and signed like other places and I, I remember um. I interviewed uh, Session Moth Martina back in February, and you know, she told me why she didn't sign with NXT UK, and now she's in Ring of Honor. It feels like she has like the freedom that she has, like if she like, and she wouldn't have that if she went and signed with NXT UK. Like that, that just shows me like when you like when you look at the list of people that were on that trial list, and legit none of them are with NXT UK. None of them signed like, and it's so like that just shows me that like, and not not necessarily like the bash NXT UK, but it just seems like. There's like so much other wrestling out there and so many other opportunities. Like you don't need to be a part of the WWE umbrella in order to be successful in pro wrestling anymore. Like things are just change. Like you don't need to be under the AEW umbrella to be successful in pro wrestling or to get that mainstream attention. You could be anywhere and you know you can blow up and become successful and then you know eventually have those companies try to, you know, bring you in. I mean, um, like I said, when all of this happened, I was abroad. And so I had no idea of what was going on when I was okay. gone. Okay. Um, but like, I, I, I know some people make different choices in terms of freedom. Um, and some people make different choices in terms of what they want. I just assume that it's what they wanted. I mean, I know the mass amount of girls that were tried out and they probably will be seen again. And right. because of what happened, because of what happened this year, you have no idea what the plans for NXT UK was at the beginning. So you never know, maybe those girls or other people were picked up during then and because of COVID mm -hmm. everything's kind of gone at the moment right. <laughs> I know early on in your career you had like a you had like a bunch of matches for uh the pro wrestling need for motion like was, was that was that like would, would you consider that like those those matches and that string of matches that you had within the promotion would you consider that like that's when you started to like really you, you started to like feel like okay now I'm starting to hit my groove or was that uh at another point in your career. Nope, that was another point. I can honestly okay. say I <laughs> I felt I feel bad. Um, mm. My first stint with Eve, um, I was the Amazon. It was mm. me, myself, myself and Destiny, and I was obviously associated a lot with the Knight family. I think what were they called, the Gyms? Mm. I think it was like uh, Catch Gym. <laughs> um, and that was that was my association, and I was basically that that like that that um, carbon copy big strong body right. person that used to crush people i left and i went to australia and i realized how much i didn't know in mm. all honesty when i i left and i wrestled for pwa and it was the first ever women's show in australia when they brought me in and i had realized that even though i had been training and wrestling at that point for about four years i knew absolutely nothing um, I had been trained to do the exactly the same thing all the time, but I didn't know anything outside that box. And it wasn't until I finally broke out and I became an independent wrestler, not so much since a WAW wrestler, but an independent wrestler. Being, seeing, being, you finally saw my face. I wasn't stuck in Norwich. Um, at that time is when I felt like I was learning more. Mm. Um, but to be honest now, in terms of my life now, when I came back from Japan last year, something happened, clicked. And then for some reason, it, it, I feel more in tune with wrestling than I've ever had in my entire life. I don't know what's happened, but it, it's just happened now. It, it, it seems like you, you like prior to the whole pandemic thing, like you really were in a groove. And like, I, I feel like that's when, you know, like this in life in general, like not even just in professional wrestling, like when you start to hit that groove and everything starts clicking, like everything just like, you know, full speed ahead and like nothing, nothing can get in your way. Uh, like just, just speaking about like your, your matches, like how you piece together your matches, you do have the, the size advantage over your opponent. So like, is it like, like, do, do you try to like, like I'm, I'm real interested in like the psychology and stuff. Like I love hearing about, like I could listen to people talk about that for days. Like I'm like real fascinated with that stuff. Like, so when you, and, and the thing is you move very swiftly around the ring. Like you can do everything. Now you do, you, you do, you can do everything that anybody else can do. And I've seen it. So it's like, like when you, uh, piece together your matches like do you typically go the route of like you know have a smaller person you know try to come back from underneath or like is it like you just try to go out there and just show that you can you know do whatever would do what anybody else can do and then like you know j just kind of let the match flow or is it like you know the typical you know uh big small type thing it depends. When I f first started out, it was usually the big, tall, small type thing. It was, look at me, I'm six foot plus, and everybody else is like four foot nothing. Right. Realistically, what can you do to fight me? But after a while, that's, I'm not indestructible. That gets boring. Um, 
what I found more difficult nowadays is everybody wants to be a flipping superstar. The problem uh, is, is yeah. that you can't do <laughs> I'm bigger than you. <laughs> Every, everybody wants to be a flipping superstar and everybody is just put, I know we live in the world of entertainment. Everybody just put the whole psychology bit out of their size. Uh, Say like a, a, a girl who's basically a quarter of my size, German suplexing me all over the uh, flipping ring. So people can go, yeah, one more. I'm like, no, <laughs> You've just ruined everything. But it, depending on the setting of the match is how I run it now. And I have now realized weaknesses. I have to have weaknesses. But most of my weaknesses are all my screw-ups. Right. I, I very rarely now let somebody completely chop me down. Because one of the most cri biggest criticisms in my career is that. And I, I don't understand it. Um, I'll be this big imposing force and everybody's, oh, she's too big, she's too stiff, she's too entertaining, she's too intimidating. And then when I try and play your little game, it's, she's supposed to be bigger than everybody else. Why is she letting that person chop her down? So it's uh, just like... <laughs> I, 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 know, I know that got to be like one of the most annoying things because it's like you can't, make, you can't make everybody happy, but it's like at the same time, it's like, okay, I'm going to play your game. And then when, when you play it, it's like, well, how are you going to criticize me for doing exactly what you said, and then once I do my own thing, and it's still an issue. Like I, yeah. I, I, I know that had to be like some of like one of the most annoying things that you had to dealt with, like deal with throughout your career. Like, do you still kind of, you know, uh, deal with that, or like as you, like as we mentioned before, like before the whole pandemic, like when you were like really going full force, like with, with, with everything, just like you know, everything was just going smooth for you. Yes, and and to be honest, it's with it's not so much in. I feel I feel bad when I say it. It's not so much in Japan because in Japan they want their monsters to be monsters. They want their yeah. intimidating forces to be intimidating forces. Mm. The <laughs> please don't not book me when I say this. The UK <laughs> scene has come become so obsessed with the thousand shotgun move um, repertoire sequence that somebody like, like every, giving everything me five thousand. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, everyone, someone giving me 5,000 Germans in one match is awesome and cool to see, but now what am I going to do for the rest of the match, huh? Right. <laughs> and then when it's boring, you're going to have a go at me, but that's what you wanted. And if I didn't do that, oh, guess what? It's not a five-star classic. All right, all right. But, well, I, I, <laughs> Again, so, I don't understand the part. <laughs> so, so, so for me, just as a fan, like, I, so, I, sometimes I, I can, uh, it, oh, it just depends on how I feel. Like sometimes I get into it, like you know, the the super fast matches and everybody kicking out of everybody's finish and like, but people like when people take these hard moves and then they pop right back up and then they give them one and they both fall out. Like so, so, sometimes it's cool, but like, like it, especially in this empty arena setting, like it, it like, you need like, action. It, like it, it can't. Like, like I mean, I mean, well, for for me personally, like when I see the empty arena stuff and I see people doing that, like, and they, like, they get hit with a real hard move and then, like, they bounce right back up, like, and it's, like, nobody reacting. I'm, like, <sighs> and up, like, like, when it's a crowd around and it's, like, a bunch of people and you hear them going crazy for it, I'm, like, okay, there we go. And, like, that's see? it. But, like, it <laughs> but that's the crowd reacting. That's the, yeah. that's the community yeah. environment. Imagine right. a match with 5,000 Amazons. You really want to see us choke bomb each other for five minutes? Is that, is that entertaining? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but like when you uh oh yeah just, just uh I wanted to ask you so like in Japan like I, I know with New Japan Pro Wrestling like things are really like like kayfabe like everything is kind of like you know you 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 can't be seen with the you know with the person that you you know wrestling against on on on, on, pro, on TV and stuff like that is it the same thing in, in in the women's wrestling promotions as well like are things like really like you know locked down as far as like you know character work and you know the the protecting the business and stuff like that. They're still old school in terms of fan interaction. That, oh, that's still very... Okay, mm, okay, okay. Um, like, I, I have been caught in situations before where some of my best friends, you know, were in the middle of Harajuku, you know, having some fun. Or, you know, we're in Shinjuku and I'm, I'm having some fun and then somebody walks by and I've been pushed into a corner. Like, and you're like, Nande, why? It's like, ah, yeah. fan. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> like, like you, you could be a fan. Don't touch me, you know. <laughs> yeah, or I was walking in Kawasaki once uh, we were going to a festival and some of a few fans shouted from the train station Amazon Amazon and Natsuki literally physically pushed me like behind two pillars so I wasn't seen because I'm not oh, okay. supposed to be your okay they're, they're, so they're very still very strong in terms of kayfabe in terms right. of fans but like 
in terms of wrestlers and locker rooms, I just think it's different promotions. My um, right. promotions that I've worked in, it's it's just as normal as a twenty twenty promotion locker room is all the time. Does that make it exciting for you though? Like when you go out and like you gotta, you know, so so sort of, you know, sort of, uh, you know, play it up a bit that you know you're not supposed to be seen with this. But like I I know like there's like a piece of that that's like kind kind of exciting and it's like kind of fun to like know that people like you know they they they're still in the mindset of you know that this is you know this is real and they and they, and they take it they know this is legit and they you know they take it very seriously and like I I think that's like a really really cool aspect of it. Like is that one of the things? That like you know it's kind of exciting for you when you go to japan it's like you know that the, that the people they still take it as seriously and you take it seriously as well but they still take it as seriously as fans do and not everybody is like of that mindset of you know i gotta know the inner workings of every single thing oh yeah mate no ego i say every time i get to the airport i want to go back to japan where people think i'm important um, <laughs> no it's it, it's like an ego boost like as you can see i i i I'm an entertainer, so I have an ego. So mm. th- that moment things like that happen, you get a massive ego, which you automatically feel important. So yes, mm. I love every moment. You're, you're probably like one of a few wrestlers that I've ever seen and like actually admit that they have, that they have an ego. Like I'm, I am feel like all entertainers, like just in every room, like they have a, a, just, just, just a bit, just a bit of an ego. So it's cool to see you like actually like, you know, just be like, you know, I, you know, I got one, so what? This, this, I've now learned that your opinion is invalid to me and my opinion is awesome and my <laughs> I'm awesome and yeah I think being in lockdown like enclosed in one space it makes uh-huh. me realize my self-worth uh-huh. <laughs> and, and you know I, I'd be remiss not to mention uh you know your, your appearance for WWE in, in, the, in the Megan Classic tournament uh just, just what, what was that experience like for you to, uh you know just recap it for me like being backstage and you know being within that you know that WWE umbrella for that you know for that uh, period of time um like i said at the beginning it this the whole story of of amazon is the story of a kid accomplishing their dream um you know i i gave the story in the may young classic about my brother about you know, my brother is blind um mm. my we did grow up watching wrestling i i, I but that was me uh, i mm. was a baby born at 20 weeks I was two pound nine they gave me all the food I got bigger and I wasn't supposed to live that everything that's ever happened to me Mm. in my life and everything that um, kind of uh, I've gone through was kind of incorrect like collectively justified in that one moment because it was what I watched when I was little it's what I stayed up on Friday nights to watch what I woke up on Saturday mornings to watch these people that I'm walking around who have given me advice and people that I idolize since I was little. So the entire experience alone um, was breathtaking. I, I got to basically stand in an arena that I had been making on SmackDown versus Raw for God knows how mm. long. And the character that I had been making was, it was in the ring for real. I, so, yeah. I, I, that, like to me that, that that sounds like really cool because like, of course everybody got their own dreams and aspirations I had my own as well like I, I know it just had to be like one of those like you know like real like self-reflective moments like when you as you mentioned like how you used to create the arena like on you know, on a video game and stuff like that and like you kind of envision yourself in these kind of things but, like you like yeah it ain't gonna happen but then like it finally happens like I, I know it like that had to be like one of the coolest like just hindsight 2020 thing like really feel the proud of yourself that you like you know like like damn I, you know, I did it and you can you know say that proudly yeah mate when I came home and I could download myself on the game because somebody <laughs> made it I was like sweet I don't have to spend like 12 hours making myself no but right. yeah it was I I it's weird before that moment I, I was a wrestler I always was a wrestler I was going to Europe I was going to Japan I was going to all these places mm. but it, it's just weird I needed that moment to prove like hi remember me right like a, like a here i am nice. type thing like a, like a here i am type thing like this is me like reintroducing myself to this broad audience and then like the good thing about that is about that that whole may young classic uh tournament like that thing is gonna be on like live on forever because it's gonna be always on the on their streaming service always on the wwe network it's always gonna be on youtube like anybody can go access this and you never know who might see this like people go back and watch classic stuff all the time like maybe you know, like, like it's just crazy. Like the, you know, the, like the, just the everything that can spawn from 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 pro wrestling and from these, you know, these classic matches. Like you look at 
back in like you look like maybe like 10 years from now like you never know who's gonna watch this and people might see you and be like oh you know who's that and do like a deep dive into your career and stuff like it just like this little like little things like that can always happen and i know that just has to be exciting for you as a as a wrestler and as a as an, and as an individual yeah you be uh usually it's the question is like, aisha why do you look like a klingon no mm-hmm. it was sherry's makeup and i like oh, 80s oh, hair yeah. metal uh, <laughs> but yeah yeah like, so yeah it will be there for you so so just just uh just uh, jump off the topic of professional wrestling for a bit like well, what have you been up to during this whole quarantine uh COVID-19 pandemic like how have you been uh passing the time um I've embraced my Jamaican heritage and I've had dreadlocks okay. put in <laughs> um I've been working out a lot I it's what I do I was into figurative and competitive bodybuilding so I, I know how to keep myself in shape like uh, mm-hmm. every I've seen workout videos online all the time other people do it and I'm like ah um, in terms of uh, technical stuff, um, in college, in school, I was a uh, okay. nerd. So I can build computers and stuff. That's and cool. Program stuff. Thank you. And I'm into video games and art. I, and literally, I've just been everything that I didn't do because of wrestling, right. I've started doing again because I've got no ring. I say, so you been so you like really into like building computer down that. See, that to me, that's cool. Too. I like that. So like you're like in the, <laughs> like really into like, like, like build a computer so like from the ground up type thing or like you mean like fixing them up and stuff like that i used to when when i first found out that you could basically take apart a cpu and mm. install new hard drives and new memory cards and new sound discs it's what i did to my first computer drove my mom nuts because mm-hmm. my computer had no back and it was just wires but i Ooh. i was basically able to build like a really fast computer out of a windows 19 packard bell and playing like gta and stuff but yeah i, I just like to dismantle it and just put it back together and hope that it works <laughs> no see that's that i i we first i i love like the real like, real like technically sound for i love the technology stuff like so like, that's cool that you know how to like you know, build stuff from the ground up. You know, now you don't never have to take it to anybody. Like you just do it yourself. I'm pretty sure that's the you know, that's a, another upside to it as well. Uh, oh, also, no. are you, I, are I was you? gonna say no, I don't. I feel I'm the worst person. When you go and buy technology with me, I <laughs> complain about insurance because it's a con. Uh, <laughs> I will do it for you. Do not pay them fifty quid a month. <laughs> right, right. And I know you mentioned um, you play some video games. So what, what games are, are you into? Uh, I like randomly shooting people on Red Dead at the moment. It has yeah. been my, like, I like going into town, finding the town with the most amount of people online and just throwing dynamite and right. seeing what happens. But I made the horrible mistake. I'm online now, so everyone can hear this. On my <laughs> online PlayStation name, it actually says Aisha Raymond. Mm. It's got no PlayStation name. So if you randomly see someone throwing dynamite at you and it says Aisha Raymond, it is me. <laughs> As a, and, and I just started uh, playing... Um... The game is a game on my phone. It's a, uh, the Call, Call of Duty mobile game, and like oh, my, no. my, 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 and my, my, my brother, my brother got me on it. And at first, when I first played it, I'm like, man, what, what is this? Because like I always play Call of Duty, but it was always on console. Like when I started playing on the phone, I'm like, well, this looks so like real. <laughs> like it was like the graphics are crazy on here. Like I've been hooked on this thing ever since. Like I had to, I had to offload the app a few days ago because I was playing for like two hours straight. I was like, okay, I need to take a break. Cause like I was like into it, like really into it. And like you can know, you know, now you got the you can uh list you could talk to people uh on your phone. Like I didn't know you could do that on your phone though. Like you could like talk to people through the you know, through the microphone and stuff like that. And I was like, I was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm getting way into it now. Cause like I'm I'm so used to that on console, but I didn't know you could do that on the phone. And like it just technology is crazy, man. Technology is crazy. Technology being crazy. The, the the thing that freaks me out nowadays the most is the VR. Like my 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 mate oh, had yeah. an oh, Oculus Rift. Man. Uh, my mate had an Oculus Rift when it came out and I thought that was amazing and I'm just like oh no now everyone's gonna basically live in Ready Player One like for the rest of, especially during lockdown like this is Ready Player One right now <laughs> right and, and, and just like whenever whenever when all this is over like um what what, what are your, some of your, your goals that you want to do in professional wrestling maybe out of professional wrestling like obviously you have like a lot of other skill sets that you can use like outside of professional wrestling so like what, what are some things that you want to do you know in the sport and then what are some other some what are some other things that you want to do like outside of the sport? Um, well, right now as it is, I literally have got to the point where I just want to stand in in the ring, be amazing, and have people go, "Yeah, look, hey, crazy. I'm right. here, right. I'm right. still here." Right. But wrestling in the states, like I've literally the classic is the only time I've ever wrestled in the states. I'd love to. Oh, really? Yep. What's that like? It was like three years ago, right? 
Yep. And um, first Goodness. only time I have never wrestled in America. I, and the thing is, if you look at my Facebook page, the, the audience is majority American and I've never wrestled in America apart from the classic. <laughs> That's that. No, 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 see, that's crazy to me. Like that, you never, like you haven't been. Like well, I'm pretty sure, you, but you haven't wrestled in in the states since the May Young Classic. Like that's you. You you would think like that would bring like so much attention to you, like just being on that platform. But like, ho- hopefully, I'm sure, I'm sure that you know, I, like after this whole thing is over, that you will, you know, you will be in the states, and you know, hopefully, I can get to see you at some of the promotions that I go to. Yeah, so so yeah. you know, this has been a, a great conversation. So I I do want to thank you for your time. You know, I greatly appreciate you. Um, you know, let the people know where they can follow you on social media, you know, let them know, you know, merchandise store link, um, anything, I'll make sure to plug it in the description uh, below this video. Uh, the floor is yours. Hey. Okay. So I did a massive rebranding because of lockdown. So literally mm-hmm. if you type in the big, if you type in big Fem Vader to everything, you get this face. Um, <laughs> yeah, Pro Wrestling Tees has my new line of t-shirts as well as if you DM me on Twitter, on Instagram or Email Aisha Raymond at Outlook.com. You can get an entire list of merchandise and great goods. Um, there will be a white version of the Big, um, big Fem Vader t-shirt that's available on Pro Wrestling Tees in Germany only in the next couple mm. of days. Okay. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> no, that, 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 that's, that's cool. We got an international, international superstar, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> but soon to be in the United States, superstar here in the States as well, Aisha. Do want to thank you for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Andrew Thompson of the Andrew Thompson Interviews YouTube channel. This is the Amazon Aisha Raymond. You see her all over the place. When the rest of the scene gets back, you will be seeing her in the States. But, but for now, keep your eye on her. Go follow on social media. Make sure you go buy all over. Buy all the merch from the merchandise store, pro wrestling tees, everything. <laughs> so, go, so, go, so go support her. Uh, I'm out, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again for watching. Mm-hmm.